Dr. Hermann Oberth, who pioneered rocket design during World War II, once cryptically stated, quote, We cannot take the credit for our record advancement in certain scientific fields. We have been helped. When asked by whom, he replied, The people of other worlds. Additionally, according to Above Top Secret by Timothy Good and William Morrow, Oberth's fellow space pioneer, Werner von Braun, echoed this mysterious reference, even including the existence of extraterrestrials, when he stated in 1959, quote, We find ourselves faced by powers which are far stronger than hitherto assumed, and whose base is at present unknown to us. More I cannot say at present. We are now engaged in entering into closer contact with those powers, and within six or nine months' time, it may be possible to speak with more precision on the matter." End quote. Just who were the people of other worlds that Dr. Oberth spoke of? Or indeed, these entities that von Braun referred to? With only Oberth's quotations, one could presume a possible reverse engineering of alien craft. However, with von Braun's more detailed expose, this possibility seems to be excluded in favor of pertained actual assistance and contact with advanced beings. Many people also believe that an encounter with these beings, along with Third Reich craft built with their technology, was once encountered in an operation known as Operation High Jump. According to certain independent researchers, Richard E. Byrd, admiral of this operation, possibly encountered a hostile, formidable opponent, who he has claimed to have described as fighters that were able to fly from one pole to another with incredible speed. In reality, however, whatever Bird's expedition experienced may never be fully publicly disclosed, as all reports, including Bird's personal log entries, remain mysteriously classified. But the connections between these curious quotations, and indeed the rumored encounters by this classified operation, are certainly intriguing. Furthermore, Operation High Jump was originally organized by Secretary of the Navy James Forrestal. Interestingly, in 1949, Forrestal was sent to recover from a supposed nervous breakdown at Bethesda Naval Hospital. However, after allegedly ranting to staff about the Antarctic, UFOs, and an underground Nazi city, Forrestal was denied all visitors shortly after he mysteriously died in a fall from his hospital room window. What did Forrestal know? Were his perceived delusional rants based upon reality? According to the legend of the German Vril Society, a secret remote viewing was held in 1919 at an old hunting lodge near Brechtsgaden. During this event, Maria Arsik, a self-proclaimed medium, presented her supposed telepathic messages which she claimed to have received from an extraterrestrial civilization existing in the constellation of Taurus. It is reported that these messages contained instructions for building a circular flight machine. It is interesting to note that German Oriental scholars and occultists alike regarded such mystic teachings with complete seriousness, with well-documented, well-funded, diligent efforts put forth to discover and such individually proclaimed powers and their messages therein into viable technological realities. What happened in the Antarctic? Who were these people from other worlds that von Braun and Oberth spoke of? Did the Third Reich make contact with an alien or possible highly advanced once ancient civilization, allowing them to engineer mystifying technologies? We find such claims, rumors, and fragments of evidence to support such possible realities highly compelling. Ever since Roswell, America has been fixated with the possibility of alien life secretly visiting Earth from their home star in a galaxy far, far away. There are literally mountains of witness testimonies from people who claim to have had contact and or a close encounter of many kinds with what they claim were extraterrestrial beings. However, regardless of the incredible curiosity and the reams of supposed whistleblowers surrounding military bases like that of Groom Lakes Area 51, 
secret bases on the moon, and, of course, witness testimonies, all claim to have been experienced by millions. Yet solid evidence for the existence of extraterrestrial life seemingly eludes us all to this day. Or does it? Many people refuse to accept the reality that we have, for many years, been actively observed by an intelligent life form not of this world. But without any concrete admittance by the powers that be, many people will not even consider such possibilities, long denied by their government. This, regardless of the many more intriguing sightings, along with the most incredible of footage. It is simply not enough for this major shift in acceptance, without the gatekeepers of paradigm's permittance. However, hopefully, the following information may persuade some of them to reconsider. To not follow in blind faith a governance that is seemingly withholding that which is deserved by all, the truth. In 2004, several Navy officers who witnessed what has since become known as the Nimitz UFO encounter have come forward with an astonishing claim. Like something straight out of a Man in Black movie, the officers say that unknown, yet highly unusual, and incredibly high-ranking individuals appeared at their location shortly after the event. These mysterious figures then ordered the confiscation of all data recordings and videos pertaining to the event. During the November of 2004, a Navy missile cruiser anchored around 100 miles off the coast of Southern California detected strange radar signals radiating from an unknown craft. The officers claimed that the signals were erratic, yet clearly of an artificial nature. They could not identify the signal's intended message, due to them never having encountered such a signal before. It didn't strangely match any given off by any known modern aircraft. Jet fighters were subsequently deployed to the UFO's location. These fighters buzzed the craft, successfully capturing footage and telemetry of the unknown object. One of the jets in particular succeeded in recording substantial, compelling, and as yet unexplained maneuvers. In 2017, the government released a number of recordings of the encounter. To the public, however, it seems that this so-called disclosure was anything but. Five Navy veterans recently spoke to the popular mechanics franchise, where they subsequently dropped this bombshell. They told all regarding what they experienced at the time. Having all been part of the Navy's Strike Carrier Group 11, they were sailing on the USS Princeton when the encounter occurred. After detecting the object, the men successfully captured footage of the UFO's incredible capabilities. The object would quickly change altitudes, sometimes lurking 80,000 feet nearly instantaneously. The UFO became known as Tic Tac because of its shape. Yet due to this confiscation of data by this unknown group, who not only had they never heard of, but seemed to carry near limitless superiority of the military operations. They rarely spoke of the incident. They further claim that the so-called Tic Tac gave off a phosphorus glow at night and would dart around in various directions, said one of the veterans, Gary Voorhees, who looked at the object through binoculars on the ship. Why did men in black take control of the data surrounding this UFO? What is it that they are hiding? Was Tic Tac a real UFO, built and sent here by an ancient civilization in another galaxy? We find the details surrounding this encounter highly compelling. Many of the most astonishing ancient sites found here upon our planet are often just the tip of an archaeological iceberg. Although millions of people flock to such sites as Teotihuacan, Chichen Itza, the Great Pyramids, etc. each year, the actual enormity of the undertaking that these sites indeed once were is unfortunately overlooked, walked upon yet ignored year after year. It is no secret that to build the enormous steel and glass structures of today, a foundation of a similar size will be utilized. These foundations allow for such gigantic weights to be placed upon these specific locations, and the sites of the past are no different. Only ever truly appreciated from the air, these gigantic plateaus are all that is left 
to allow one to accurately calculate the true size of these ancient monuments. The Giza Plateau, for example, although rarely mentioned by Egyptologists or indeed tour guides, is an area of flat sandstone that has for many years been argued as once having been man-made. Many factors go into such a hypothesis, the most important of which being the realization of the requirement to build on this specific site, a realization only in its early days, consisting of alignments with celestial pathways and indeed Earth's own energy grids, known in England as ley lines. Indeed, the perfectly flat, efficient vegetation barriers found within Mesoamerican rainforests are also still clear testament to the ancients' past capabilities and the vast undertaking these sites once were. Yet we feel the most astonishing of these ancient plateaus can be found in Chile. Predictably, like the many other clearly manufactured plateaus, it seems this must also be argued as a natural formation. Known as El Enladriado, it is an astonishing ancient site, located atop a 2,300-meter-high basaltic mountaintop. 233 megalithic stones, once masterfully placed in a geometric shape, form an artificial amphitheater atop the mountain, some of the stones being over 10 tons in weight. Three enormous standing stones were found in the center of the plateau. Two were discovered to have been aligned with magnetic north, while a line through one of these and the third stone points to the summer solstice. Interestingly, however, UFO sightings and claims of otherworldly activity is what the site is most famous for. Many sightings of shining spheres going into water or wooded zones without any human explanation. In 2008, Chile's tourism service brought UFO spotting into the mainstream by turning the site into the country's first official UFO trail. Just what is going on at El Enladredo? Who built such an enigmatic ancient site? Why did they choose to build it atop a mountain? And is there really a UFO connection yet to be unraveled? Clearly a bizarre plateau that someone, at some point in history, went to tremendous effort in creating. Also, the attempts to argue it away as a natural formation are all factors we find highly compelling. There are many unexplainable ruins upon our planet, whose age, or indeed true origins, are still an enigma to be unraveled. However, we feel that thanks to ours and many others' astute and devoted research, we do now have a very thorough understanding of past lost civilizations' capabilities. In some areas, there is undoubtedly more than one advanced ancient phase of building work. For instance, we feel that the ancient pyramids of Giza, ancient relics photographed from almost every angle, now, thanks to alternative research and in-depth scientific investigations, shows clear indication of at least three phases. These three phases are also possibly evident at many other ancient sites, in particular Peru. What's important regarding these phases is that although they have undoubtedly been accomplished at vastly different times in history, they are all incredibly advanced. In fact, they are far more advanced than any ancestral attempts to recreate them, which can be found throughout our own thoroughly academically documented history. This throws up some controversial implications. For example, did this ancient civilization, just like ours, develop to a point where they were capable of space travel? Or perhaps, a more interesting posit, were these most sophisticated and indeed ancient ruins left by a civilization who actually traveled here from another planet to begin with? Perhaps Mars? Since its discovery, Mars has been the subject of countless theories regarding the possibility of past life having once flourished upon its surface. There are even those who have proposed and relentlessly searched for an ancient advanced human civilization having once inhabited its red landscape. We have indeed shared a number of Martian theories, supported by compelling physical evidences from its surface, including the mystifying cleaning events which have been experienced by each rover while still able to move on the planet. 
Although many of the most compelling, possibly ancient artifacts found upon the Martian surface have indeed been covered by numerous sleuths, we feel the following object's possible identity may have been overlooked. Pictured within a NASA image known as Sol 746, presumably taken on the 746th day, it shows a perfect sphere resting in the red dust. Although noticed, its puzzling characteristics, surprisingly, have yet to be linked with one of the most recognizable UFO shapes of the modern age, the metallic sphere. These objects, not only witnessed, documented, and video recorded on nearly every continent on Earth, they have also been the object most often recorded on many inches of unexplained NASA footage from low Earth orbit, lunar, and now, we feel, much further afield. Could this mysterious sphere actually be a crashed metallic UFO? Although spheres appear in nature under the identification of land pearls, its origins would have involved tremendous amounts of water, something that has not been seen on Mars for an extremely long time. Could this mysterious sphere, photographed by NASA, actually be that of a crashed metallic UFO? We find the proposition highly compelling.